We're looking at the bottom of a Sansui AU717. In my 60th video, I rebuilt the power supply, and that turned out very nice. In this video, I'll take a look at both amplifier modules. I'll do the same thing to these, pull, rebuild, reinstall, and test those as well. Fortunately, these are very easy to remove from the amplifier. Disconnect these seven connectors, remove the four screws on either heatsink on the other side, and they slide out. So let's get started. This is the right channels amplifier board. The left and right boards are basically mirror images of each other, and so the work on each will be nearly identical. On each board there are five electrolytics, all of which will be replaced. Similar to the power supply board, the two larger electrolytics were glued down, and the glue has started to affect some of the components. So after I remove those two larger electrolytics, I'll remove the glue, remove any affected components, clean them if I can, or replace them as I need. I'm going to replace all three potentiometers. We have two for the DC offset, one for the bias. These are the originals. They are single turn and they are very likely oxidized. So those will be replaced with new multi-turn potentiometers. I will inspect the thermal compound on these two heatsink mounted transistors and if there's some on this one as well and replace as needed. I'll also inspect the thermal compound on the two output transistors which are mounted to the heatsink out of sight down here. So let's get to work. I try to only film when it's quiet, but I do have kids and I do have dogs, and so sometimes background noise is unavoidable. Separating the board from the heatsink is as simple as removing these five screws. There were five components affected by the glue. I was able to salvage the four resistors here, but I don't feel comfortable trying to salvage the diode, so I'll replace that. The right channel is complete. Now I'll do the exact same thing to the left channel. Both channels are complete. The rest of the rebuild was pretty uneventful. It's time to send these back home. The amplifier powered on just fine. I've had it on for at least 10 minutes now. It's time to make the adjustments for the DC offset and bias. I'll start with the DC offset. You can see I've already made the adjustment for one channel. 
We need to make it for the other channel now. We have about 300 millivolts of offset on that channel. There are two potentiometers to make this adjustment. You start with VR1, that's the coarse adjustment, and then finish with VR2, that's the fine adjustment. And now we'll move on to VR2. The spec is plus or minus five millivolts, but with these 25 turn potentiometers, you can pretty much get it down to zero millivolts. Perfect. Let's move on to the bias. The target for the bias is 20 millivolts plus or minus one. You can see I've already set it up again for this channel. Let's set it up for this channel. I'm gonna use VR3 for this adjustment. Again, I have absolutely no idea how people do this reliably with a single turn potentiometer. That looks great. I'll monitor for about five minutes and make adjustments as needed. Otherwise, let's move on to testing. Here we go. Nice clean output from each channel. Very evenly matched so far. How about a square wave? Those look nice too. Let's keep going. The manual says should get about 85 watts per channel. We'll see if we can hit that. Clipping there. That's closer to 100 watts, but we're definitely getting our 85 watts. This is great. I'll button it back up and let's do a final sound test. I'll use this NAD712 stereo receiver as a preamp for the final sound test. Thanks for watching.